Okay, hi there, welcome to our next video on the bond market. Uh, in the previous video, we just took a quick look at bonds, corporate bonds, government bonds, which are ways of businesses and governments raising the money they need to finance their spending. Well, we're going to take a look at, at an example of what might happen to a company that needs to raise extra money and suggest a short research task you might want to uh, have a go at. Let's consider a business that's doing pretty well uh, but facing uncertain times. Uh, the Gym Group is a highly successful low-cost gym group in the UK, competing with the likes of Pure Gym and others. They had revenues of over £120 million in 2018, and they're backed by the private equity firm Phoenix. They've already raised £40 million in loans, and they listed on the stock market in an IPO worth £125 million in 2015. We're going to be moving on to stocks and shares in the next session of this course. The Gym Group has since raised another £130 million in the equity market and acquired two other Gym Groups. So a phase of rapid internal and external growth. And over the last five years, their revenues have increased sixfold. The number of people who work in the business has more than quadrupled to over 400. So this is clearly a a fast-growing business, as you can see by the number of clubs in the gym group, aided by acquisitions. It's increased by a factor of five from 2012 to 2018. Likewise, a big rise in the number of people taking out monthly memberships at the gym group, now over 700,000, according to this latest data from 2018. So clearly a business growing, but as we know, businesses like cinemas, Gym groups, restaurant chains, many of those businesses have been badly affected by the economic fallout from the coronavirus or COVID-19 pandemic and subsequent recession. Here's a quick scenario to think about. It's not actually happened yet. It's just a thought experiment. The gym group decides to enter the bond market and issue, let's say, a million £100 bonds repayable after five years. A lot of bonds, a lot of small loans, uh, and it's a five-year maturity. Here's my question. Identify four risks for you as a potential investor of, let's say, using uh, £100,000 to buy a 1,000 pure gym bonds. Here's a chance just to press the pause button and see if you can jot down, if you've got a pen and paper uh, handy, four potential risks for you as a potential investor of putting £100,000 of your money into uh, a bond issue by a fast-growing company. Press the pause button and we'll go through some, some ideas together. We know the Gym Group is a fast-growing business. We know that uh, they've acquired other businesses. Uh, what might be a risk to you as an investor of putting some money into pure Gym Bonds, let's say? What did you come up with? Here are my four points, but there'll be others. Uh, let's, uh, let's do a quick comparison. First of all, the big risk, I suppose, is the company may go bust. These are particularly difficult times for lots of businesses in the UK and other countries with gyms closed and worries about future memberships. The company may go bust and, of course, it may partly default on some of their loans. There's a risk you'll get only some of your money back, probably not all of it. The second risk, remember we're saying that the business is going to borrow money for five years. The other risk is that high inflation is going to cut, reduce the real value of the bond. So the £100 bond you're going to get back in 2025. What will £100 buy you in five years' time? You see, inflation reduces the real value of a bond. Third risk is you may need to buy and you may need to sell those bonds between now and 2025. Maybe you need some liquidity. And the risk is that the £100 bonds you bought are, let's say, they're trading at only £45, £50, let's say, in which case you'll, you'll make a lot on the bond. And I suppose the other one is what's called the opportunity cost of investing. Economists have a lovely phrase, opportunity cost. That £100,000 you've put in the bond market could have been invested in something else. I don't know, potatoes futures or Apple stock. Who knows? So there could have been higher returns from investing your money elsewhere. It's all about risk and return. 
Uh, one of the research tags I've given to my own groups at school is this one. And you might want to have a go at this yourself. I gave them a little bit of time, 15, 20, 30 minutes to go onto the internet. And I wanted them to find a country whose government can borrow for at least 10 years at a very low rate of interest. So can you find a government that has extremely low 10-year bond yields? Conversely, can you go out there and find a country whose government has to pay very high interest rates on any bonds they issue? No set number of years, just find me an example of a government that has to pay very high interest rates. What kind of government would that be? Have a think about the risk we talked about before. Find an example, if you can, please, of a government that, that in recent times has defaulted on some of their loans. In other words, they've failed to repay some or all of the bonds when the bonds reached maturity. Uh, linked with that, what is the longest maturity date you can find for a national government issuing debt? Which countries have issued long debt, long term debt and for how many years? Can you find me a great example? And on the business side, can you find a good example of a UK business that has used the bond market in the last year to raise new debt finance? How much did they raise? What do you think was the motive for going to the bond market? Have a go at that research task uh, if you're interested in bonds. And uh, that should be quite interesting to see what you come up with. Trading Economics is a good site for getting economic data pretty quickly. TradingEconomics.com and specifically if you go to their bond section, they have some data on 10-year bonds issued by governments. That's handy. The Financial Times has a special section on capital markets, which includes the bond market. And use their search engine, bond default, bond issue, bond prices, to get some latest news articles. And I'm sure you'll be familiar with using smart Google searches for bond news and limit it to stories over the last year. There we go. Good luck with that research task. Uh, it'll take you into the, I think, the really interesting work, the interesting world of corporate and government bonds. Thank you very much indeed.